This series on the wine industry in North Carolina is brought to you by the North Carolina Wine and Grape Council. Goodness grows in North Carolina. No matter which winery you visit, a common pastime is wine tasting. But did you know there's a proper way to taste wine? On this episode of On the Map, we learned some wine tasting etiquette. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now to go along with uh, our wine series, um, we're here with Inez Rubastello, who is uh, a local business owner here, and uh, we're actually in uh, a restaurant that she's a part owner with right now, and we have this great selection of wines in front of us because you are a very knowledgeable some sommelier, yeah, sommelier. Great job. and sommelier, could you explain a little bit about what that means? So it's French for wine steward, okay. and it's one who serves, studies, and tastes wine professionally. Oh, wow. Um, Gives you a license to yeah. be knowledgeable about what you drink. Exactly. Absolutely. And to help others um, uh, find out what they like. So. Great. So what we have in front of us, you're going to help me decide, um, I guess, especially the etiquette. The etiquette is important, too, right? Sure, sure. So chose um, three um, white grapes or what we know as white grapes and three red grapes and when you're tasting wine a lot of times they call it blind tasting mm -hmm. when you don't know what you're drinking and there is a way to find out what you are drinking through sight smell and taste oh uh, so okay. um, I of course know what's in the glass yes. but I was just going to kind of run through um, uh, a few different grapes that are some of my favorites and that are pretty popular. Okay. So, um, uh, one of the most misunderstood grapes out there is the Riesling grape, and most people who know me know my strong love for Riesling. And um, something that um, I want to make clear to anyone who comes into contact with me is that Riesling is not synonymous with sweet. A lot oh, really? Of people hear Riesling and they think, "Oh, I don't like sweet wines." Right. But any wine can be sweet if all the sugar isn't fermented out. So in this glass, I have a Chilean Riesling, Chilean. Um, so from South America, mm -hmm. and it is bone dry. It's from one of my favorite producers called Connoisseur. It's one of the um, only wineries in Chile with um, zero carbon footprint. Oh, so okay. they are not only making great wine, but they are doing a lot for the environment. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the big thing initially is to have a white backdrop okay. and so that you can see um, uh, the color of the wine against uh, something that's all white. And you're looking to make sure there's, not to make sure, but something that's going to tell you maybe the age of the wine is okay. um, if there's no sediment. And sediment mm -hmm. normally comes from the breakdown of tannins um, and most commonly seen in red wines. Yes. There yes. could be um, tartrates. Um, that are often seen in um, heavy-duty Chardonnays that um, um, undergo malolactic. I'm not going to get into all that. Anyway, That's um, so we're looking at the brightness of the wine, the clarity, the concentration, mm -hmm. the rim, um, and then the actual color. And so um, skin contact is what gives wine its color. Right. Okay. And Riesling is a thin-skinned white grape. Um, so I would um, call the color of this wine star bright. Um, it's obviously transparent. You could see your ring or your bracelet or your watch um, through, through it. it. And there's no sediment, so I'm going to say it's fairly youthful mm -hmm. and um, most likely a thin-skinned grape. Um, and just from sight, that's about what you can tell. Okay. Okay. And so then the next step um, is to swirl it. And right. a lot of people think about swirling as this kind of pretentious um, hoity toity. But I definitely I, thought it had something to do with tasting it. Yes. Because everywhere to we smell. have learned. Okay. Yep, absolutely. So one thing I ask um, people to do is to smell a wine without touching it and then to take the wine and swirl it and smell, and you'll smell so much more. The mm -hmm. reason you, you swirl wine is you're agitating the esters, mm -hmm. and that's going to really bring out the aroma. So um, in this case, uh, when I swirl and smell, um, it's pretty aromatic. Mm -hmm. 
there's like a green hose, garden hose thing going on, and a lot of kind of um, tropical fruit like uh, papaya and honeydew. And I smell no vanilla or no toast or no coconut, and often those smells are equivalent to the wine being aged in oak barrel. Okay. 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 So um, a lot of times you'll hear buttery or toasty or um, dill or coconut, and that those flavors or aromas often come with wine being aged in oak barrel. So that was definitely not aged in oak barrel. Right, definitely not. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to taste it, and of course, um, you'll see that I spit the wine, and that's because when you're tasting professionally, you don't drink it. You oh, spit it. Well, there um, goes the fun. <laughs> there goes the fun. So I'll spit it, and um, when I when I start tasting it, you'll see that I breathe air in through my mouth, and that's kind of. Um, allowing me to taste even more flavors than I might if my mouth was closed. So, here's the fun part. <laughs> and um, I always say you need to taste twice. Okay. The first time is getting whatever was in your mouth previously. Right. Getting, getting your palate out. like alchemated. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, taste one more time. There's a lot more work to your tasting than there has been in mine. In the past. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's very fun. So, my, the flavor um, profile on the palate mm -hmm. is going to confirm what the nose already knew, and that there's no oak on this wine. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you're tasting in terms of structure. You want to look for acid, low, moderate, or high. Um, tannin, low, moderate, or high. And body, low, moderate, or high. Okay. And body is um, correlate. It correlates to alcohol. Okay. Okay. So this um, wine has high acid for sure, um, no tannin, so low tannins, and um, body is is uh, medium plus. So it's stronger in the alcohol content. Yeah. Tannins kind of give it the color more than likely, right? So darker wines have more tannins. And tannin give tannins give it the ageability. The ageability. And um, often it's the skin, uh, the skin of the grapes that. Um, give the tannins and therefore give More the, the darkness or, okay. the, or the color. Okay. So um, in this case, um, the wine doesn't have any faults. Um, the fruit flavors were confirmed from the nose. It's like ripe papaya, honeydew. Um, there's a little bit of lime zest. Definitely um, that kind of, I mentioned it, garden hose. You know, when you smell a brand new garden hose from Ace Hardware, my favorite place to shop, um, you will um, smell this kind of like rubbery, mm -hmm. rubberiness. And that often comes from New World Riesling. And mm -hmm. when I talk about New World Riesling, I basically mean countries that are not in Europe. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, also one thing that um, you'll notice in Australian, New Zealand and Chilean Riesling, um, they ferment the wine often to dryness. So um, when you, you know, if the, the definition, definition of fermentation is sugar plus yeast equals alcohol and CO2. Okay. So when you ferment all the sugar out, you have more alcohol. Correct. Okay, so um, German Rieslings that some some German Rieslings that are off dry, you'll notice they're in the eight to ten percent alcohol, okay. um, whereas this one is thirteen. Oh you know? wow! So it's quite a difference, and I love blind tasting this on people who tell me they hate Riesling because it's sweet because there's no sweetness to it whatsoever. I feel kind of guilty um, because <laughs> I'm tasting without you. <laughs> well, uh, do you can you you can fool people that way in, in, in a lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. And you can make believers, make a lot of believers. So that wine is, um, I think, ten or eleven dollars a bottle. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic, really, really zippy, and um, yeah, I'm a fan. So I like to, I like to do that in my taste tasting lineup. But that wine comes from a winery that has been uh, around for maybe a longer period. I mean, some of these North Carolina wines are very young, yeah. right? Yes. And they can use some of what. Uh, you're doing right now to, I guess, create a better taste in wine through? I think North Carolina is doing an amazing job of discovering what grapes grow well in their soil okay. and um, climates. Riesling is actually one of my favorite grapes grown in North Carolina. Um, 
Riesling, Viognier, Cabernet Franc, um, Tempranillo. So, yeah, I think North Carolina is definitely taking advantage of the people who went before us and kind of figuring out what grapes are best suited for their soil types and the climates that their wineries mm -hmm. are located. Because we've learned that there's a lot of great wine that's not necessarily a Scuppernon grape for or, sure. or, you know, grown. I mean, there's a lot. For of, sure. Yeah. For sure. So um, that actually brings me um, to another favorite grape of mine, which is Sauvignon Blanc. And to me, it's one of the most aromatic white grapes there is. Um, um, it can see oak. Mm -hmm. um, often it doesn't. Uh, I, I shouldn't say, there are no absolutes in wine. <laughs> California, sometimes oaks are Sauvignon Blanc, white Bordeaux, which is um, can be primarily Sauvignon Blanc, does use some oak. This particular um, Sauvignon Blanc is from Slovenia. So uh, I was just kind of doing not mainstream places. but Absolutely. Yeah, not so mainstream. this Sauvignon Blanc, um, a lot of people would describe the grape as having green grass, um, aromatics, jalapeno pepper, um, green peas, um, grapefruit for sure. Um, uh, and like um, kind of a citrus zest. So often um, on the kind of tart sour fruit. Sour. And um, I didn't look at the um, color, but yeah, you know, the wine it's pretty is close clear. To... Star bright, uh, fading rim. So um, again, you're going to know this wine is youthful. And um, in terms of color, moderately uh, thin-skinned gray. And when you say youthful, do you mean that the vine that it comes from is Great young? question. Okay. No, I mean that it was harvested in, uh, the grapes were harvested in the past one to three years. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So smell it. For sure, it's a lot of grapefruit, citrus zest, orange zest, lime zest. Um, All these things are just come into your head. They're very indicative of the grape, okay. you know. So, once you start tasting enough, you'll notice that. Some, that and, and that's the idea. We were kind of, um, Brittany and I were discussing, you know, when you're talking about judging wines professionally and rating them, the biggest thing is that they're um, typical. That they're made in the typical. Uh, they taste like the grape that they're made from, and the um, they're typical of the environment where they're grown. So. Um, if I taste a North Carolina Cabernet Franc, I want it to taste like Cabernet Franc, and obviously it's a compliment if I say it comes from the, it, it smells like it's uh, Loire Valley style, uh -huh. but um, I don't want to drink um, a Loire Valley Cabernet Franc that tastes like Napa Cabernet Sauvignon. So you okay. you want it to taste like the grape, and you want to take you want it to taste like the environment where it's where it's grown. So okay. And what's nice is that you're able to confirm on the palate mm -hmm. what you smelled on the nose. You know, uh, sometimes that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, I was sometimes ask. you can get tricked up, but there's like a a peppery spice to this. And I often get that from Slovenia in particular. Um, but yeah, if I tasted the Sauvignon Blanc um, blind, I might get that it was Sau um, Sauvignon Blanc. I might say Gruner Veltliner. I would definitely say um, Old World or Europe, but I'm not sure if I would get Slovenia off the bat. Huh. That's well known. Um, but you've been tasting wine for a long time. Somebody like me, I could do it blind. No, no I do. <laughs> you might. It, it, it's definitely practice. You know, mm -hmm. nobody does it. I mean, that's. I have never seen anybody um, taste for the first time because you have no, nothing to go off. I mean, you have to know what. Ah, uh, let's see, Loire Valley Sauvignon Blanc tastes like to be able to say. Yeah, next this week, is what it you is. You got to have yeah. somewhere to base all these assumptions, not assumptions, but rather taste and Yeah, for off. sure. 
And I guess, uh, are there a lot of sommeliers? Is there, is there something that you, you learned from somebody else, or is there something that you learned from how did you learn it? Yeah, yeah, no, mentors and lots and lots and lots of blind tasting mm -hmm. to go through the Court of Master Sommeliers. One of the particular um, exams is blind tasting, and it's three whites, three reds, and you have 25 minutes to identify region, year, oh. grape, and you, it's like, Algebra, they want you to show your work. You can't just say that's Slovenian Sauvignon Blanc 2015. They're going to say, How did you get there? And you've got to ah. talk about what you smelled, what you tasted. So, wow. Um, and then I had to throw this in here because uh, rose is one of my favorite styles. And people often think of rose as white Zinfandel and then they think sweet. Mm -hmm. And again, um, white Zinfandel is often sweet. Often, but not always. But it doesn't have um, to be. It doesn't have to be. But true rosé is a style originating in Europe. Okay. And um, like we talked about, the color of wine comes from skin contact. So if I wanted to take this red grape right here and not um, ferment it with the skin, it would be white juice. But it gets right. that color from soaking with the skins. Right. In this particular case, well, like in a red wine, it often soaks with the skin two weeks. Mm -hmm. In a rosé case, it soaks with the skins 12 to 24 hours. So it's very light. Yeah. One of my favorite um, grapes now, it wasn't because it wasn't made in the style, um, but people have been talking about Pinot Grigio for years. They love Pinot Grigio. And often to me, an expensive Pinot Grigio was light, diluted, uninteresting. When Stephen and I were in Europe picking grapes in 2002, I was picking these grapes that I thought were red grapes that hadn't quite ripened. Mm -hmm. They were like a mauve color. Mm -hmm. And the uh, vigneron said, no, that's Pinot Gris. Pinot Gris, or Grigio, is um, French or Italian for gray. So the grape is oh. actually mauve in color. It's oh. not a white grape. Interesting. And so um, fairly recently brought into the U.S. They've been doing it in Italy and other places for years. They started um, fermenting the Pinot Grigio with the skins. Therefore, it's making a rosé. So this is Pinot Grigio. True to, true to form, um, and you'll notice, I, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's like a pale salmon in color. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people have said, oh, no, no, I want Pinot Grigio. <laughs> and this is Pinot Grigio. Um, it's just been fermented with the skins for a while. So the fermentation with the skins adds body, adds flavor, adds yeah, dimension. Color. Yeah, so and all those things. anyway, I think it would be really cool if North Carolina um, got into doing a little bit of this too. We uh, we went somewhere that made a rosé, and I don't I don't know if it's a Pinot Grigio, mm -hmm. um, but I do know that we visited one of these wineries that made a rosé, yeah. and that's where I learned that you know it could be you could make a red grape and uh, a red wine rather, or I guess it's not a red wine, but it's a rosé from yeah, red wine yeah, yeah, exactly. red grapes, yeah, yeah. with and most, white grapes. Makes most rosé is made from red grapes, um, and it can be made from any red grape. Um, I. I think it's interesting that this is a style of Pinot Grigio that we haven't seen in the United States, you know, up until fairly recently. All right. So in the past 10 years. Um, yeah, so anyway, this one is fun, and I call this my swim team special. I own a swim team, which is like the longest event of your life. I'll pour a bottle of this over a big gulp of ice and, <laughs> and enjoy it while my kids are swimming. And, <laughs> be a nicer, happier person because of it. Um, yeah, and, you know, I didn't talk about food and wine pairings at all, but that rosé um, would be really delicious with anything that had mushrooms in it. Mushrooms or eggplant and the, the, the Sauvignon Blanc, obviously, are, are great with um, vinaigrettes, green salads, goat cheese, that's a classic pairing, and that's because of the acid. And then um, dry Riesling, gosh, that's one of the most versatile wines there is. Okay. You know, you can do so much with it. Um, I, um, I love Riesling with spicy food, like Indian or um, just 
really good tamales. It just goes with the spice. I mean, because that was going to be my next question is how do you, just over time, you learn what food goes with what wine? Because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't just care. Of what, yeah, really, yeah. A don't. lot of people are like, I want my Cabernet Sauvignon and I don't care if I'm having lobster ice cream. or fry Diablo. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a, to me is a train wreck in the mouth, but it, it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter what I think. It matters what makes people happy right. and if that's what they like to do. Um, but a lot of trial and error has come into matching wine and food for me. You know, I remember buying a red zen and was so excited about eating it with Mexican food and my I thought my throat was going to close up because it was so spicy and the wine was so high in alcohol and it was just a major um, dilemma in my mouth. Yeah. Um, and luckily that was before I worked the floor as a sommelier so I <laughs> never recommended that pairing. Um, but pairing is fun because it's so subjective and what I may enjoy you may not and mm -hmm. what you may enjoy I may not or we could both love it so right. it's fun. Well, do you have to have a special palate? I mean I guess do you have to be do, pe do certain people, they all, we all have different palates, but do certain people, are certain people born with more senses in their palate than other people? I don't know. I guess that's it. People have said that women are born better tasters. Um, that's what I was getting at. I heard that. I do know that when I was pregnant with my children, I had a heightened sense of smell. And I was like really good at picking out any smells for anything, for better or for worse, or some smells I wish I hadn't smelled, not in wine, but like when I was emptying the trash. Um, so, um, I don't know, most, you know, the majority of master sommeliers are males, okay. so, I don't know. Anybody can be become a sommelier then, it did, I mean, but, but certain people are just, I guess, uh, more inept to certain things. Yeah, so, so if you study wine and you work the floor and you taste wine and you can be a self taught sommelier. Um, to become a master sommelier, which I am not, okay. you have to uh, pass a blind tasting. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay, so you're doing this blindfold, and so you're already with a handicap because you're not going to be able to look at the color and, t and, and tell us, but I'm going right. to I'm gonna say, you know, it's on the lighter side um, okay. in terms of it looks like it's um, a relatively thin-skinned grape, and you can see through it. It's um, more of a kind of a pink garnet color versus a, you know, a dark black opaque center. Okay, so I'm going to put the glass and, oh, maybe I should swirl it for you. Okay, and that's then, a good yeah. idea. Okay, all right, so I've swirled it and now you're going to smell it. Okay, so okay. it's probably not a dark, dark wine. Here's the color, okay. although I smell... I smell the oak. I yeah. feel like I smell it's been aged in a barrel. So what do you smell that makes you think that it's been aged in a barrel? Uh, just kind of like a, a wood and um, uh, almost dark, just, just, just a dark smell to it. I don't know how to describe okay. it other than like a plummy kind Plums? of smell. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Is there anything other than fruit and, and woodiness that you smell? I smell a little bit of maybe, maybe red, maybe like a cherry or something. A cherry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Very like good. a cherry Very flavored. Good. Are you going to um, taste it? Yes. We're going to let you drink. You deserve a drink today. Okay. <laughs> Wow, that tastes really good. Um, okay, give it a second taste. Give it a second taste. Give it a second yeah. taste. Okay. All right, it's very definitely oak. It's very wood, but not. Um, it's got a. A great, uh, it's, it's fruit filled. I taste the grape, um, and I think it's a, a, a darker uh, oak aged kind of um, cab type of taste. Okay. And, and and I don't I don't I don't really know any other than that because I <laughs> I, I I don't know a whole lot about tasting wine other than what I've learned during this series. Okay, so in terms of um, body age, age, age okay. what is what are you thinking in terms of age? And you don't have to give a particular year. You can just say one to three. Yeah, I'm thinking one to three. One to three years old. Okay, mm -hmm. and then um, new world versus old world. Do you want to say new world? New world. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You want to go to any particular place? 
I really, I feel like it's it's um, definitely a, a North Carolina made wine because I almost feel like it's a wine that I've tasted before. <laughs> um, and, and so I'm gonna go with it's a North Carolina made um, wine that's probably in the 10 to 12 percent alcohol range. I don't know the body of it. Let's see, let's see. Hold on. <laughs> Blindfolded on camera, drinking wine. A height of my life, that's for sure. <laughs> New skills. Every day is an adventure. Okay, why don't you take the blindfold off? All right. Great job. We have See, the Jones Von Drell Cabernet yeah. Franc from the Yadkin Valley 2012. And you have had that wine before, right? I have. I have Amazing. tasted it in uh, visiting with Chuck and Diane. And that's a, that's a great taste of wine. It's funny how your palate remembers things, especially when you don't have your eyes. Yeah, absolutely. So go and like have a blind party. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage everyone to try that, as long as you have a partner to help you <laughs> find your seat. But I, I, I thank you so much. Inez for uh, yeah. for being with us today. And, Thanks for having uh, I'm me. I'm trying to swirl my wine and I can't. Yeah, you did a good job. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>